originally about to be determined between dueling welterweight grapplers were Ms. Brahimai and Ecuador's Michael Morales. Unfortunately, Brahimai out of the matchup. So coming in on nine days notice, we have the former X1 World Events welterweight champ, Adam Fuget. And Fuget, you will not forget, and I'm sure you're going to hear terrible jokes like that all week from everybody, but when you do look at it for Fuget, he did take on a very, very decorated fighter his last time out four months ago in Solomon Renfro. And in that fight, if you go back and watch the entire LFA event, it's very Renfro heavy. Right before the fight, giant Renfro promo. He is a giant favorite to win that fight. And Fuget knocks him out. And it was a big time win for Fuget because he had spent about two, almost two and a half years on the shelf. And as I had mentioned, former X1 World uh, Events welterweight champ, you go back, you look at the camp that he's coming out of, Art of War MMA and Fitness. He's a Eugene, Oregon product. You know Oregon for such fighters as one Westland, Oregon zone, Chael Sonnen. But when I went through all of it, I mean, listen, he threw nine straight leg kicks in a row against Renfro because... Leg kick, well, he threw his leg out there. They were mostly to the head. Threw a couple of leg kicks. And then as Renfro walks in, it's just a quick right hook KO that drops him out cold. So good win for Fuget. Coming in on nine days notice. Build is a bit of a grappler. He does have strong takedowns. And if you go back and watch a lot of his fights, he's trying to close the distance. He's huge for this division. Like he really is. He does seem very big fighting shorter guys. So he does have to crouch quite a bit. But when he closes that distance really strong in on his takedowns and you like to see that strong imposes well on the ground very good submission abilities out of Fuget uh, and a good opportunity for a guy at 33 years old to get his foot in the door with the UFC here this weekend and that's what this fight feels like to me it's hey Fuget if you win okay it springboards you up the rankings quite a ways because you beat a prospect with a ton of promise here's the problem you're fighting a prospect with a ton of promise. And Michael Morales isn't just one of these prospects who they come on in the scene, you have no idea who they are. Like, we were both really excited for him coming on when he was fighting Trevin Giles. And that's the thing. Guys who fight Trevin Giles in their debut are normally thought of quite highly, not only by the UFC, but by fans as well. Remember when Drikas Duplessis beat Trevin Giles? Off to the races! Exactly! And Michael Morales made him look not like an amateur, but he did not make him look like the Trevin Giles we are nor uh, we're normally used to seeing in the UFC octagon. He beat him up at range, he had really nice boxing combinations. Like, Morales really showed the full toolkit of his potential in his UFC debut, and that was a great thing to see because I do feel like it gives the more casual audience a great platform to be like, okay, we know what we're going to get from Morales, and that's the tough thing for if you get in this matchup. Like, I don't know how much success he's going to have on the feet. Like you said, he does have very good takedowns. He's extremely explosive, and he is able to get into boxing range. He's good at disguising his takedowns with some of his combinations, but I don't know how much respect Morales is going to have for the striking of Fuget. Now, you can look at that two different ways. Fuget had his last opponent do that, and he knocked him out in a beautiful way. But the problem is, Morales is such a good counter striker. He has great hip movements and base movements on the feet, and that's something that he uses to great effect. He's somebody who can slip and rip with his shots. He really does like that fade counter or pull two. It just, Morales has a much more advanced skill set than you would think from a guy who's only 23 years old and 13 and 0. And I'd be really curious to ask him this too. Just, there's not a lot of fighters from Ecuador in the UFC. And do you think like Marlon Vera is, you know, somewhat responsible for this? Like this is a young guy who probably didn't grow up having a lot of guys in his home country, having success in the sport. Then all of a sudden Marlon Vera comes to the UFC, has a ton of success, becomes really almost like a national hero down there. I'd be really curious to see if Morales did sort of view the career of Marlon Vera and be like, okay, that's something I can aspire to in the future. Yeah, and I mean, when you do look at this card, there's a few different fighters that are going to be coming up. There's also one that's featured on Dana White's Contender Series, if you're tuning in this week, or if it's already happened, uh, in one of the Luna brothers that trains at Entram, Jim. And you look at it for Morales, there's pictures with all of these guys from Ecuador really rising up a long time ago with Marlon Vera. But for a guy like Morales, training out of Entram, Jim, working is striking because He's a three-time national wrestling champ out of Ecuador. He's also a Muay Thai champion as well in his native, uh, you know, Southern American country. So when you do look at it for Morales, he was an underdog coming on Dana White's Contender Series against Nikolai Verontentnikov, a guy who was featured on Dana White's looking for a fight, but they said he's too old, but then he's got a fight on Contender Series. He was pretty good, though. And Morales did a great job in that fight, taking him down, 
pouring the pressure on in his fight against Trevin Giles. You saw that. He was able to finish him in that one. And for Fugit, he was a plus 350 underdog his last time out against Solomon Renfro that if you know, I know it's a Dana White saying, but if you know, you know. But if you look at it for Fugit, a great win there. But a couple more things. Both guys have great kicks. Fugit doesn't really disguise it. He just throws a left high kick from an open stance. Loads up too. Michael Morales can throw it to all different levels. The one thing I worry about, Morales is a really explosive striker. So again, Drake is plus I'm going all the way across the cage and throwing everything into it. Morales will go into it, but he does keep his head back a little bit more, whereas Drikas does the peekaboo, I'm coming forward, no more peekaboo. We're going balls to the wall. For Morales too, the other thing, very high guard out of him which I like when he's taking on a guy like Fugit, who throws a lot of kicks that are coming up high, maybe block those off the arms, however it works. But I think it's an interesting matchup stylistically. Not really surprised by the odds writing them down just before this. So Morales open minus 500, minus 597 right now. Fugit open plus 385, plus 410. But he did that his last time out, and he was able to get the win. So we have a look at the predictions over on Topology. Just what I will say, though, just before we get to yeah, those numbers. I, we often say, oh, I like this fighter, but not for these odds. I completely understand why these are the way that they are. Yeah, I gotta be completely You know what I mean? It's just yeah. like, normally when there's a guy who's a minus 620, it's like, okay, don't touch him with a 20-foot pole. And, again, for the, me, I, it's too rich for my blood. I just feel like the odds are a little bit juice. MMA is a crazy sport. Anything can happen with four ounce gloves. But, like, Morales is so good in every single area, and he does really seem to have one of those skill sets that it complements itself, and that's a really important thing for a guy who's only 23 years old to have. Yeah, even in his last fight, Trevin Giles was able to defend a number of those takedowns. Really wasn't the story of the fight, but if you look at... Um, uh, Morales on the regional scene. He's fighting guys that, yeah, not really the best. Blown up lightweights up at welterweight. Not the best level of competition, but he's beating them in convincing fashion. And even in the Vera Tetnikov fight over on Contender Series, he suplexes them near the end of that fight. So, you know he's there for the three rounds. I do like to see that out of the younger guy. We talked about both these guys. The odds, again, are what they are. We look at the topology vote. Surprise us there to you. I'm going to say over under 95% Morales. I'll say slightly under, but he'll be the favorite. Oh boy, 908 total votes, 95% Morales, 78% by knockout for the 5% that a few get, 17% by submission, 29% by knockout, 29% by decision. You're going from Hermes Brahimai of LFA fame to Adam Fuget, now of LFA fame. It's a tough ask. I mean, Fuget, again, had the almost two and a half years, two years, uh, three months, nine days off between his Renfro fight and the fight that he had had before that against a the man they called Devin Brock, who was 4-2. and two. Took him down, finished him on the mat, TKO uh, due to ground and pound. But again, for Fuget, before that fight even, uh, we're taking on 3-2 and two, Reno Romigio. And then before that, we're taking on 9-10 and 10, Jonathan Visante. The loss before that, Kalen Hill, who was on Contender Series, who was an interesting middleweight. That's the one other X factor for Fuget. Does have a little bit of experience, couple fights at middleweight. He is a bigger guy at welterweight, as I mentioned, to start this one off. But I think the skills and everything that goes with them uh, belong to Ecuador's Morales in this matchup. This is what I want to see, and I want to get your opinion on this. We saw a great fight at last pay-per-view between Robbie Lawler and Brian Barberena. I want to see a retirement fight for Robbie Lawler between him and Michael Morales. Now, oh, no. I seem like a 6'6 six, six sadist by asking for that, but oh. still, if you want to build an Ecuadorian star, and if you want to give an aging vet one of those classic send-offs that the UFC likes to do... Marlon Vera had to fight Frankie Edgar, right? That's what I mean. I, I have no joy or pleasure in saying this, but I could see that being a potential matchup in the future. Try to build the name of Morales quickly. I think it's going to be fun. Fugit has decent takedowns. He has a lot of power on them. He's very much submission over position, though, which I think could get him caught because he's like to go neon belly and then try and go Jeez. for a submission. It's a tough fight. Both of us going with Ecuador's Morales to get the win. Let us know down below. Are you from Art of War MMA, friend, family, or a member of the Pacific Northwest? Are you picking Fuget to win? Are you going with Morales? We have 13 fights on the card. Two title fights up at the top. You're not going to want to miss. Keep it locked in with Fight Night Picks. As we always say, let's get, get into it. it.